Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're in a space that's often been called the Iowa class battleship ceremonial deck. Uh, and this is where the ship's magnetic compass is located. We are on the O3 level, just aft of the forward funnel. So this is the aftmost part of the forward half of the superstructure. And there's actually a break here with an expansion joint. And then the after part of the superstructure extends back there with this platform sort of overhanging it. If you have learned nothing else from watching the 650 plus videos that we've watched, that we've uh, made on this channel in the last two years, uh, the big takeaway you need is that battleships feature massive redundancy. No matter how much armor plate you install, somebody's always going to be able to punch through it. So you just have to have redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. And that's what we've got right here. We are one deck and uh, maybe 100 feet away from the bridge. And yet we've got one of our main navigational compasses. This is nowhere near any auxiliary steering position. Um, there is a sound powered phone jack over here on the aft face of the uh, smokestack, which might be for a navigator to uh, use in an emergency. But uh, this is just one of those redundant features. So if this magnetic compass is the redundant, what are we normally using? Uh, the ship has two gyroscopic compass repeaters. There's one down in Central Station, six decks below us on third deck. And there's another one on the opposite end of third deck back aft in the aft IC room. These two compasses use a gyroscope to point to true north. They need electrical power to operate. And they feed repeaters all over the ship, in the captain's and admiral's bridges, in the four steering positions, in some of the senior officers, including the captain's staterooms. Uh, th these things are all over the place. However, when you lose electrical power, those go out. So the ship has some backups. So first of all, there are small boat compasses come in little wooden boxes that are for the ship's boats. So you can take one of those anywhere you want on the ship. They're magnetic uh, and they'll do the job. But then we've also got this guy right here, which is a full on magnetic compass. And this is part of the original design of the ship. And they designed this part of the ship around it. It's a magnetic compass on a vessel which has approximately 45,000 tons of ferrous metal, steel. Uh, so that steel is going to cause this compass to point any direction but north. And remember, the Navy doesn't like magnetic compasses as much as uh, electrical compass repeaters because this points to magnetic north, which is slightly off from true north. Um, anyway, to get this to function properly, you'll notice that unlike other parts of the ship, the railings up here are made out of brass, uh, and even the deck around it is uh, probably brass or aluminum so that it is non-magnetic. And then you'll see that it's got flinders bars on each side are here. They're, they're made out of iron or steel, and their design uh, is so that it will cancel out the magnetic field of the rest of the ship around it. Uh, however, depending on what longitude and latitude you're at, this might not function properly, so you'll notice it's on a sliding rail, and you can adjust these to force the compass back into pointing facing magnetic north. Cancel out the magnetic field of the big friggin' battleship around it. I always thought that this was just a normal magnetic compass for backups. Uh, and like I said, it's often, this part of the ship is often referred to as a ceremonial deck. Uh, this is where a lot of guys chose to do reenlistments and, and those sorts of ceremonies. Uh, and, and for smaller gatherings of guys, you've even got a ready-made pulpit from here on to either the midship's 40 millimeter gun tubs or missile deck. Um, and it's a space that because of all the brass was constantly getting polished and uh, cleaned up. Upon closer inspection, you notice that there is a bunch of uh, electrical stuff around the bottom. In particular, there are three of these boxes that say M, F, and Q coils. Well, our M, F, and Q coils are for our degaussing cables. So there, there are three 
big electrical cables wrapped around the hall. And when you turn on the degaussing motor generators in engine room two and four, uh, that puts power into those cables, which is designed to cancel out the magnetic field of the ship so that she's not susceptible to magnetic detonators in mines and torpedoes. Uh, and I believe that the compass is further wired in to a repeater at each gyroscope. So uh, the gyroscopes down in Central Station and aft IC each have a repeater right next to them, uh, which I always thought was weird, particularly in Central Station, because there is then a helm with a repeater right there. So I always assumed, okay, they've got one right there so the guy manning the, the gyro can make sure that it's functioning. What I actually think is going on is that the magnetic compass is sending its signal down to the repeater uh, so that the guy can check is the gyroscopic compass matching the magnetic compass or close enough, whatever the, it's a couple degrees of variation, magnetic north to true north. Uh, are they in the same ballpark? So it might be a way of checking to ensure that both are lined up accurately. What I think the coolest feature of this uh, binnacle is, is that it is made by the Lionel Train Corporation. So the company that makes the, the Lionel trains during World War II was making uh, compasses like this one for the Navy. Uh, this particular one has a 1940 manufacturer tag on it. So the, the Navy got a bunch of these in the inventory right then and there, and uh, probably at the Philadelphia Navy Yard. And as the ship was being built, took one out of the inventory and dropped it in place. Uh, so I, I think that's just really cool because it really illustrates why the United States was on the winning side of World War II. We mobilized absolutely every sector of industry and economy to support the war effort. Instead of making model trains to go around the Christmas tree, Lionel was supporting the war effort, making something that apparently their plants were set up and, and easy to convert over to this electromagnetic brass and metal uh, sort of fitting. So uh, speaking of Lionel trains, if you're interested in model railroads and uh, that whole hobby, Battleship New Jersey is going to have a train garden in the officer's ward room uh, in December. Check the description below for more details and the exact dates. So did you grow up with model trains? Uh, my family always put LGBs up around the Christmas tree and I've still got a couple at home. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. We really appreciate the support you guys give us. And there's a link down in the description if you'd like to continue supporting. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so that more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.